All right, so here we go with another video on this cellular uh, security research with LTE Sniffer. Uh, I'm going to, everything that I showed in the last video, matter of fact, if you hadn't watched it, uh, I'll put the link here. You can click it and watch it. Uh, but everything still applies. So um, if I didn't say it the last time, operating, as you can see here, the warning, operating a, even if it's a private LTE network, <clears throat> It's probably tightly regulated in your jurisdiction. Um, the other thing when we jump over to the LTE sniffer, I'm just going to go ahead and say it now, main purpose, support security analysis research on the cellular network. So I'm taking every precaution here to do everything in this video against uh, a network that that I essentially have control over. Uh, the phone is mine, the phone is on the network. Um, so I'm just trying to make that clear uh, so there's no issues in these um, in these videos here that this is for just research. Um, there's a lot you can learn here about uh, a cellular network and that's essentially what I'm trying to encourage. So I'm not going to cover everything. I would say go read a little more on SRS RAN, read a little bit more about um, just the cellular infrastructure in general. And um, anyway, so I'm going to go over a couple things here because I didn't go over it last time and I've, I've made some changes and I've got everything working. <clears throat> so to make this video, I'm using SRS RAN and I have a COTS UE. In this case, it's a Pine phone with a, um, I think it's a, a SysmoCom SIM card. And so there's a nice write up here on SRS RAN how to get this set up. I'm just going to point out a couple things. So I'll come down through here. And so when I set up the EPC, uh, I had originally forgot to change the uh, line 27 and 28, the MCC and MNC. Uh, I forgot to change that, um, let's see, to, I'll just show you here on mine. So this is in Dragon OS already all installed. So if you're looking at the EPC config file. Uh, oh, okay, so it was originally 001 and 01. I commented those out, changed it to 901 and 70. Uh, I also uh, note here or also note here that the APN that you're gonna have to set on the phone is SRS APN. <clears throat> I left that by default. That's really the only thing I changed in that file. If you look at my user db.csv, you'll see that I've added this line here. Things to note uh, that I, I didn't pay close enough attention to, but that mill there, um, all this information uh, comes with the uh, SysmoCom um, SIM card. So that's how I put it in and uh, seems to work. 9,000. This I actually put all the zeros and then when it runs it actually uh, changes that that information so if you're wondering what's going on there and then the other thing is the ENB. Let's see the only thing I really changed in the ENB was to match which it's all detailed in these directions here but I'm just showing you 901 and 70. I changed the PRB. Uh, actually I was just messing with that because my internet does not seem to actually be working on the phone. I don't know if it's the specs on the tower that I'm using to run is not enough. I was reading some um, tickets about that on SRS RAN. I uh, tried to lower it to 25. Um, the ports, oh, that's another thing to note, the NOF ports. So um, really, as far as I understand, LTE sniffer only works on two or less. So just remember that. Um, I think by default, if that's commented out, you're looking at one port on SRS RAN. Okay, I think that is everything uh, that I did. Uh, like I said, on the phone, I've added the APN. It connects to the network. And then the only other thing is if you look in, so, so I'll just point this out, in user source SRS is it RAN, yep. And then SRS EPC, this is all in Dragon OS. That's where you'll find that masquerading script. And you would look and see what your interface is that's connected to the internet, and then run the sudo 
the dot SRS EPC and then paste the interface here and just like it shows you should get back hey the masquerading interface and it'll say what it is so I've done all that I still am not actually getting out um, uh, loading a page on the internet but that's okay because I'm showing activity and so now we can run the sniffer but if you've hung with me this long and you listened to all this I should have pointed this out in the beginning if you don't have a B210 this is where things get pretty cool so if you look down through here you can see what's actually um, the features wise so just note 20 megahertz base stations just uh, note some of that information there but when you get down and you look at the downlink sniffing um, and it mentions the USRP B210 so again in this video I'm still only doing the downlink sniffing um, but I don't have actually a B210 but the cool thing is is that the ant SDR E200 uh, functions as a B210 so if you if you look up the ant SDR E210 you're gonna see it's in a metal case and that there's only two antennas however I've taken it apart and there's actually two additional uh, one TX one RX um, antenna mini what is it mini UFL um, ports on the actual SDR itself so I have another antenna plugged on there and, uh, and I've been told that the NSDR functions as the USRP B210. Um, I didn't confirm whether or not this option works, but I went ahead and threw it on that it talks about on the command line, adding this dash A and up in the uh, frames, which extends the receiving buffer to achieve better synchronization. It, I don't know, it, it may have actually uh, helped in this case. Uh, what else can I note? So the Pine Phone, when I show here in a second, we're sniffing. It actually comes up as RNTI's unknown. Um, I, I don't know if it's just because of the phone type. Is I've got to understand a little bit more about 64 QAM versus 256, so on and so forth. But we are going to see some activity, and we should also be generating a PCAP file. Uh, let's see. All right. So how do we get this set up? Well, we need to run the EPC on the uh, desktop here just like last time but we're gonna see more activity this time we need to run the E and B also I guess I should note I've actually configured a static IP address on uh, connection 4. That's another thing that I'm probably not doing it justice is I actually have a USB Ethernet adapter plugged into the desktop in order to uh, plug into the E200. I don't I would not I would not recommend that. I would try and just run it direct into a uh, gigabyte uh, port on the desktop not not USB gigabyte connection all that. Anyways, I've set a static IP to 110, and if we, uh, let's see, if we do UHD find devices, then I can see my E200 there. Also at this point, we see we've got our downlink of 2680. I hope I'm not going too fast here. I'm trying to cover everything uh, as much as I can here. And so... What I'm going to do here is um, run the LTE sniffer with that dash A, two being two antennas. I actually up the workers to eight. I think that's associated to the threads. Frequency 2680 uh, dash C cell search. I really don't need that because I know I know it, what it is or what it's on, but it's fine. Mode or, or dash M zero for just downlink, and then we'll throw that dash A for that number of received frames to 512. And we're going to get this going. And so, again, this is all on a network that I have. But in this case, pay attention here. You can see it's opening the two RX antennas. And it may make some um, complaint here, which, well, interestingly enough, it did. Uh, let me think. Dash A, dash C, 2680. Let's run it again. Hmm. Let's 
see. Yeah, that's probably what it was. I had, okay, so we see the NOF ports there, zero, the PRB 25. Okay, so we have it running now. I just uh, moved the um, ANT SDR, the uh, antennas um, inside the little area here I have set up, protected. And, and so now we're processing these uh, sub frames here and sorry I'm actually reaching down here I'm gonna remotely turn on the pine phone and so we should see some activity here uh, once we get this turned on yep okay so we got the user connected we can see our information over here and now we can start seeing activity here and let's turn on the APN and mobile data and data roaming and so let's see I'll start doing or trying to load some pages anyways on here and let's see And so I've actually not uh, gotten a page uh, to load out on the internet, but you can see that there is activity here. And I probably should have ran this to output the um, <clears throat> PCAP files on the desktop, but that's okay. We'll, we'll go looking for them. So you're probably going to see a couple of RNTIs. Um, when this uh, disconnects and, and reconnects. So anyway, the, the, the really cool thing here is the fact that we're using this ANT SDR as a B210 with two antennas and we're uh, synchronizing and decoding this. So I think that's a win. We've got the Pine phone uh, connected in this case. And so it's, it's pretty close to um, a real uh, network and a great way to test this out. All right, so let's let's stop this. And you can see the various times that the uh, phone connected for whatever reason disconnected connected. So I got to look into that on the SRS RAN side um, or look at maybe running this on something a little more powerful possibly. And then I'm hoping by the next video uh, that I will be able to piece together an X310 so we can show the downlink and the uplink to get way more uh, information out of this. So let's see, we ran, uh, okay, so um, the downlink uh, PCAP was actually put in my directory. I've cut, shot that little video because I have other files there and just put it on my desktop. So we'll open up Wireshark again, and if you watched the last video, I showed how to configure Wireshark. And so I'm sure it's probably very uh, similar information as I showed in the last video. I think it'll probably get a little more interesting once we get that downlink and uplink information tied together and then again it's basically just just information that is not encrypted but I'm really curious um, especially when we're looking at uh, using the internet I'm, I'm really curious the information that's passing there and then of course um, that security API that uh, provides additional information so but anyways um, main focus uh, looking at using other SDRs and, with this, and in this case, the Ant SDR um, does a pretty good job here. So, all right. Uh, hopefully, again, by the next video, 
we'll move on to uplink and downlink where uh, things will get quite a bit uh, more interesting. All right.